Kala Koto Kato, hello and welcome to the breakdown. Well, the All Blacks, they've taken their tour on the road. They've gone through North America. They've taken on the US Eagles. Job done, nice and simple. They got on a plane. Now it's off to Europe to take on this weekend. It's Wales, Sir John Kerwin, Mills Muliayena. JK, we're going to talk about the weekend. Big crowd in Washington, D.C. Great to see the All Blacks in action. But in reality, did this test serve a valuable purpose? Totally. Didn't they make a couple of million dollars, <laughs> Milsey? Yeah, a couple yeah. of million dollars. Yeah. I, I, did it help America? Probably not. Don't know, really. Um, I think, you know, for to get the public behind, you need to be competitive. But from an all-black brand point of view, I think, yeah, tick the box, move on. Yeah. They even left straight after the game, didn't they, on the plane? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I think it was always going to be, um, obviously, eat some dollars. Uh, back in, promote the game. Um, looked like it was it was awesome, but I suppose from a um, player's point of view as well, somewhere different, you know. So they would have been excited by that from the USA. Uh, a little bit hard when it when it's 100 points, and you know, I mean, was it a spectacle? Probably not. You were picking 151 at half time. Yeah, well, was, I was looking like that. It I, was I looking was like that. I, mean, I, I, I thought to myself at the time as it's going on. In fact, if we keep accelerating and playing the way we do, we didn't quite dominate the second half in the same way. But I look at the performances and go, surely, if you're the All Black selectors, there's not a huge amount in terms of guys putting up their hand for bigger assignments later on this tour you can take out of this performance, right? Oh, I think you know they would have went in with some some goals, had a look at a couple of players, and but. Their minds would have been set on what's going to happen this weekend against against Wales. So you know, blow you know some cobwebs out of out of the guys having had two weeks off. Um, get some structure back into it and and really focus hone in on um, you, know, you know next week. I think they probably would have really got a plan in place in terms of before this game about who's going to start against Wales too. Yeah, like the All Blacks, you know, and you guys know full well that when they look at that game there'll be things that they'll be looking at they won't be happy with. I didn't think the bench particularly came on and did well. Not their fault, you know, it's a loose game, it's 70 odd points when you get on, but they all tried to throw the ball around a bit, so it sort of just broke the game up a wee bit. Um, but at some stage you sort of got to go, you know, if you're, if you're Damian McKenzie, you're happy. He's played exactly the game we want to see him play, he's putting, putting pressure on Geordie. Moanga goes out there, says right, you know, and then Bowden comes on late and, and does well. So, you know, there were guys, you know, the young Lord got out there, good, looked good, you know, get a test match. But it was never going to be about it being at risk. No injuries, get the game done, get on the plane, tick the box, move on. Well, let's get some context out of this game from someone who was on the ground in Washington, D.C., one of our own here, has been in and around Sky for a long time, has been in the States now, he's a rugby consultant for Rugby United in New York. He went back to New York earlier on. I caught up with Rick Salizzo and talked about this challenge that U.S. rugby faces. Rick, you have returned back to the big smoke from Washington, D.C. I want to talk to you about the test match, though, between the All Blacks and the Eagles. From your perspective, was this game a success? Look, I know um, the scoreline was um, was tough on the, on the Eagles and and for USA Rugby, but really, I think for people to see, and particularly the USA Eagles players, to see how rugby can be played at that pace, you know, I mean, 70, 80 percent of the tries were scored, they were launched from the All Blacks own 22. So to experience that rugby firsthand, to to see the skill and the fitness. Um, and the desire to attack from anywhere, that, that can only be good for us here in the US to see that firsthand. Um, I think we'll have a massive influence. Where do you think that influence is going to take effect, if it is going to take effect, and who needs to grasp it? Is it simply the players? Is it the coaches? Is it a mentality in and around the game? Yeah, it's a really good question. I mean, it's a... I, I, I didn't really appreciate it till I moved up here, but this is a vast, vast place, and, and there's, um, you know, it's there's a lot of people with different ideas. I mean, every, every state almost have a different approach to the game, a different mentality. You got to understand here on the east coast, for example, you're exposed a lot to the premiership because um, you get up in the morning, uh, the premiership's on TV, you have bre your breakfast, and, and they see a lot of premiership rugby. But Super Rugby, for example, is on at 4 o'clock in the morning, so no one ever watches it. Um, whereas on the West Coast, obviously, it's different. So there's a lot of influences from, from South Africa, from the UK, from New Zealand, from Australia. Um, and, I mean, I think what's important for the US is they find their own DNA. 
that they don't look at, um, you know, how do they play it there? How does New Zealand do it? How, do, how does Ireland do it? How does Wales, South Africa, whatever? Um, and, uh, and, and that's, you know, that's something they'd probably be searching for. Um, and, and just finding that's going to be crucial to them. You're a consultant with a major league rugby team in New York. And so when you look at the potential of the players in the international game, is it there on the horizon? Can you see the improvements, given the fact they haven't managed yet to qualify for the next Rugby World Cup after dropping games to Uruguay? Yeah. I mean, first of all, I just want to put that Uruguay thing into a bit of context. I mean, Uruguay are not a bad side. They beat, beat Fiji at the World Cup. Um, you know, the USA beat them here in the US and then lost to Uruguay. And beating Uruguay and Uruguay has proven pretty tough for the US over the years. But in saying that, I think... I think the USA rugby has got some massive challenges. I think they've really got to sort out their development pathways. And I, as I, the thing that I find here is it's a lot of fragmentation because everyone thinks they have the answer. And it's just, and it's a, because of the vastness of the place, it's hard for USA rugby to say, right, everyone, this is what we're going to do. Now, that's easy in New Zealand. Um, you know, we all do the same thing, we all follow the same models. Um, and, and also, we get first pick of all the best athletes. Now, rugby doesn't get that here. So there are some great programs going on at the moment to to shoulder tap some outstanding athletes and turn them into rugby players. And some of that work's going on at the moment. I know we're looking at some players like that um, that have got um, uh, through an academy. They've got a, a, a limited rugby experience, but they're either college wrestlers or, or college um, football players who are every bit the athlete than anyone I've seen in New Zealand is. Um, they're just great athletes, but um, so it's just a chance. Sorry, it's just my Uber Eats was just ringing me to tell it's downstairs. Um, <laughs> Welcome home. <laughs> yeah, seven pizzas. Um, yeah, I think the athletes are there. It's just getting them into rugby. Is it gaining then major league rugby, the fact that this professional competition, which is still developing and emerging, is it getting any recognition or traction in the US? Yeah, definitely. And I think that's what I'm talking about. It's pulling it together, you know. I mean, I think Major League Rugby is doing an amazing job at the moment. Um, you've got to remember, I think it's like in its fourth year, fifth year, something like that. So it's relatively new. But it's giving a focal point. So now there's something to build to. You know, if you're a young rugby player, you know, I'll play for my club, I'll play for my college. The goal of playing for my Major League team. So there's now a structure to, to build and, and, and develop talent through to. Um, so I've been really impressed. You know, I'm a bit of a, a skeptic, but I've been really impressed with what I've seen with Major League Rugby. And I think that it's, um, you know, it, it's going to really help the development of players. It's going to really, you know, someone like Andy Ellis has had a massive uh, uh, influence here in New York because not only he's a good player, but he's able to teach everyone around him. What, what does a pro look like? You know, and, and for our guys, they're sort of thinking to themselves, oh my God, watching the All Blacks, how, how do they play like that? Well, then now they can talk to someone like Andy and go, well, you've done it. Talk me through it. So in terms of that development, as the players improve, though, they need competition, the US. I mean, it, and of course, these times have been very difficult for everyone. The last two years, there have been limited opportunities. Schedules have been thrown out, out the door, but... Is, is the Pacific Rim, is that the answer for the US to get that regular competition? Does World Rugby need to create something for them so they can get consistency? I, I, I'm not sure if I'm right, but I think that I don't think the Eagles are playing again until the World Cup qualifiers uh, in July next year. So, you know, it's pretty tough. I mean, so I think, I think World Rugby needs to really help them. Um, you know, it's, it's so important for World Rugby for... for for the game to take hold here in the US and the US. And, you know, there was all this talk about the World Cup possibly in 31, um, that for the next 10 years, that there's a lot of work done from outside to help US get stronger and, and, and finding them fixtures. Um, you know, you say the Pacific Rim, well, that's a long way from New York. Um, so, you know, it, it's close if you're on the West Coast. So, so the good thing about the US is wherever you base the team, you're close to something. Um, there's opportunities, and I think they need more games, more opportunities to play, gel, and 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 develop. I mean, but I, I think it's also important, you know. 
that we do recognise what a special performance that was by the All Blacks. I mean, I know there was a lot of emotion around Sean's passing for the team, and there's just a lot of things that also happened. You know, you had a lot of young players that were giving a chance to prove themselves. They've been sitting around, and it really reminded me, and you were in this game, of that, of that performance in the World Cup against Japan, where your whole lot of, in 95, you had a whole lot of players. This was their chance to really say, you know what, I can do my bit for the team. And I, I thought that was a one of the most incredible performances I've seen from the All Blacks for a long, long time, um, despite the opposition. I thought, and, and you, 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 as I say, you were part of that game. Uh, look, I, I thought it was going to be under threat, given the way they'd sort of played in the first 40 minutes. Uh, look, Rick, it's great to get your insights. Um, I know you've turned down a, a Nets game to come and talk to us on the breakdown, which is fantastic commitment. Uh, are, are you, well, Uber Eats have just arrived. I mean, I don't want your food getting cold. Thanks for joining us on the breakdown, mate. You're a good man. <laughs> Can I be honest? It was the Brooklyn Nets or seven pizzas, and pizzas are always going to win. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers, mate. Uh, JK, good mate of yours. Uh, is that par for the course? With, with eight pizzas. Eight pizzas? Yeah, eight pizzas? totally. You can eat a pizza. He can eat a pizza? Yeah, not scared of a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> You're not scared of a pizza. You've got pizza uh, on the menu tonight. pizza tonight, yeah, at home. Uh, outstanding. All right, let's talk about some of the things uh, he was talking about. Are we talking about the long game with, Jap um, with uh, the US, like Japan? Japan, the team that, like, say, 1995, we win by 145 points. But look where they are now, Mills. They're beating South Africa, they're in the quarterfinals of the World Cup. Is it the same strategy or does it need to be different with the US? Oh, I, look, oh, I think what he speaks about in terms of how vast it is, he, he's absolutely t talking the truth because there's so many challenges in USA. You know, he talks about academies, you know, picking guys out of academies. These aren't the academies that we know that what they are, the academies where they're coming out of the school system right through to a provincial system. These are personal academies that someone has gone in and said, I'm going to run an academy and I'm going to try and get kids out of school to come through this rugby grade. So all, already you've got challenges there because that academy is successful then it's that person's own ideas that he wants to put forward um, you know and so there's so many of that so when you when you almost look at it and strip it back it's almost amateur um, and then when you come together as a as you say they're kind of just picking out of these academies or guys that are playing basically similar to, to club rugby the MLR have, have sort of brought that together in somewhat and in terms of while well, they're they actually sitting around a table and talking about how it sort of works so I think it needs a different model. Japan's a little bit different because it's purely run by the, the companies, JK, and that's probably where the pushes come from and um, the success of, of Japanese rugby. Yeah, and look, 20 years in the making. I went over there, you know, at the end of my career, and it was the f first sort of influx of, of players starting to go, uh, keep getting younger, guys going a younger age. But it's been 20 years in Japan to making those playoffs with a really strong uh, competition, a university competition is really strong. Then they go to the top league, like you mentioned, Millsy, where you've got great investment from the clubs. And then they've been, st like when, when I took over Japan, it was interesting, I went to the went for the USA job at the same time. So I flew into Japan and then went to the USA. The, dif the difference was that we got into the um, Pacific Nations Cup. We played against Fiji, Samoa consistently, right? We had the Asian Cup, Pacific Cup. I went to the US and like you went, it was just totally split from one coast to the other. My, my original idea and what I presented to them was put a New York franchise in the Premiership League in the UK and on the, on the West Coast. LA should play in a super competition. But I think the MRR is probably the better solution, but it's going to take 20 years. Yeah. And that's what football they went through in America as well. You think about the fact that, that soccer, when it got to the same situation, trying to develop it, and you see where they are now. They're qualifying for um, football World Cups. They've certainly been competitive on the international stage. But more importantly, it's taken a grasp in terms of the fan base. There are fans and there are pockets of it. If, if I look at it, though, are we seriously talking that this is a possibility for a Rugby World Cup? hosting responsibility? The fact is this, should World Rugby look at this, you know, in, in 31 and go, you know what, we probably need to take this opportunity? I think if you're looking from a financial point of view and you're saying there's definitely a following there, there's, there's pockets, but their pockets are, pre are pretty big in terms of, you know, of, of the following all over the place. Um, is it? I mean, they're going to need to get the, themselves together. I think the challenge for USA is coming together. You know, as I said, the MLR, yeah, they, they have slowly come together and have just sort of come up with ideas that a governing body in terms of the MLR are actually running it. But there's still so much other challenges they need to get right before it actually goes there to, to, to promote. From a financial point of view, could possibly work, JK? Oh, I, I think it's a no-brainer. 
like, what are we just going to have in France again or have it in South Africa or New Zealand again? Like, really established rugby nations? I mean, if we want to be serious about growing our game, that's what FIFA did. And when was that? 2003? I mean, that's probably 15 or 20 years ago now. I read they had the Soccer World Cup, right? And they're going to Qatar. Yeah, they're going to Qatar, exactly. Football World Cup, when you've exactly. been on a major player, when you think about football around the world. And so I think, I think the interesting thing that the Americans will bring to is a real professionalism to our sport. They've already started where you've got to pay for the franchise, you know, you've got to pay a certain amount of dollars, you know, it'll be run like they do their NFL. So, yeah, I think if we want to grow a game, where else are we going to go? You know, you've probably got Russia, China and America if we want to grow the game, and America's probably the easiest option. I, for me, I still felt as though the progress was small, given from where we played them last time to where what happened on the weekend. I, I looked at it, Mills, and go, you know what, I didn't see the athletes that I thought I would see playing for the US. Now, I know they've got a number of players who are playing in Europe, but the one thing you cannot substitute at the international level is speed. And there was no secondary defence, there was no recovering. The fact we were making space and, and ground on the outside easily. I was expecting to see from them more speed to be able to contain us because in the end, combined our speed with our skill, they were in a situation that they could ever stop what happened on the weekend. Yeah, and the thing is, you know, there's, there's always been that talk about the res resources that they've got, you know, in terms of the athletes. You look at the NFL players and the ability to try and get those sort of guys that are in colleges to actually play rugby that have perhaps missed out. We still haven't seen that. But perhaps we, have still have, we haven't seen the professionalism of, you know, the rugby in, in general in, in, in the US. And, and exactly what I've spoken about, you know, the academies, they're so different. It's, it's kind of like you, you starting up your own academy, JK starting starting up his and going, he'll probably have pumped a little, little bit more money into it because he's got more than, than both of us and yeah. I'll start mine. OK, so that's kind of how it is. And then we come together, but JK, he, he has, the, he has the, 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 the major role, uh, major vote because he's got the most money. So those are the kind of the challenges like that they face. <laughs> I like that. You're talking you know his I mean? sort of talk. That's what you're I talking. Think, I think what surprised me about this American side was I, I didn't see any African-American players that I was expecting. You know, there's been that crossover... Isles and those amazing speed men. I mean, they're brilliant athletes, and I, I enjoy watching the NFL. And when you talk about crossover, you know, there's 3,000 college students that don't get picked up, don't get drafted. And I was hoping to see a little bit more of those types of players. And I know I, I spoke to Ricardo about it, and he said it's just really difficult. So what they probably need to do is start playing rugby in the colleges and in school so that the kids, you know, you might play... American football, but you've also played a bit of rugby, so that transition's not as bad. But I, I was a bit surprised, actually, at the, at, at the mix of, of the team. Yeah, absolutely. 